Hello everyone, Dan14 Prime here. I want to do a video share out today with you guys with the Transforms Element TE-01. This is the OP leader. This is a third party masterpiece Optimus Prime, along with Magic Square being the uh, good third party alternatives of head of Takara's version three Optimus Prime coming out later this year. Figure costs about 120 bucks. If you're interested in picking him up or Magic Square, check the link in the description below. Any shopping you do those links supports the channel at no cost to you and is very much appreciated. Check my Amazon page as well, link down there as well. Very much appreciate that. Uh, so TE01 here, very cool figure. Had to pick him up. I've got Magic Square video out on the channel if you want to check that out. I thought this guy maybe was the better alternative, but I was surprised because Magic Square was really getting all the hype. And every time I see a picture on Instagram, it's always Magic Square. Uh, but wanted to pick this guy up. I thought the color scheme looked better. I thought the finish looked better. Uh, and I have to say, I am not disappointed having this figure in hand. Beautiful tuned accuracy, beautiful finish on the figure, great playability and articulation, a very complex and technical transformation, which may turn you off or you may find somewhat satisfying. I don't mind it myself. And I think all in all it makes for a better truck mode as well uh, than what we got with Magic Square. So I'll do a separate video while I really get into an in-depth comparison of Transforms Element and Magic Square. Optimus Prime Alternatives, so look for that video on the channel. We'll focus on this guy in this video here today. Let's jump in closer. So let me give you just a quick spin around the figure from the wide angle view. I think great tune likeness, big bulky chest. Get the lankier arms and legs. Autobot logo there does come in the box. This is the second issue or the reissue, which came out in March, of uh, March April of 19. It does come with an extra head. He came with these stickers. I'm not sure if the original issue did. Uh, but definitely the extra head, I believe, is new to this reissue. You know, I would say the smokestacks in bot mode could have done something to tidy up, scrunch down, shrink up. I don't know. They look kind of a little bit bulky and hefty. But from the front view, I think those are really my only complaints. I love the, the white. You get a better white than Magic Square here through the legs, or MP10 for that matter. And then the nice clean blue all the way down. You'll notice a nice glossy finish. This thing does finish very well, particularly the blue on the legs. I think the white, the yellow, the hands finish very well. The red probably not quite as glossy, but does still look good. Profile view of the figure here, very, very clean. You can see really just no backpack or bulge to speak of back there. Again, the pipes here, a bit long, kind of kind of lanky. The fuel tanks here, I think a fair size. They're a bit bigger than uh, what we've seen on Magic Square, but versus Tune, I think it works. A little bit of kind of unsightly slide mechanism there for the ankle tilt and some transformation. Could have probably covered that a bit better in some way. But again, one of the few, few complaints of the figure overall right there. Back of this guy, just phenomenal. I mean, you could just maybe display him like this. I mean, sure, you've got your screw holes back there. I mean, he's got to be put together somehow. But otherwise, everything finishes so nice, nice and flat. Everything looks natural back there. Got to have a chrome bumper back there that becomes the, the truck mode bumper. But hey, let's be realistic, right? Otherwise, the back of these legs finish super nice, all nice and closed up. Let's go ahead and get some comparisons out of the way here. There you got Magic Square on the right. Again, probably what jumps out at you should be the finish. Definitely glossier there on the left with Transforms Elements. Again, sort of that skinnier, lankierness. When you look at the arms and legs, they're not quite as bulky. But then you'll notice probably the bigger, bulkier chest and windows, the transforms element. And again, on Magic Square, a bit of the shorter stacks, I think, uh, does look good. Again, I'll do a more in-depth comparison, but that's sort of a top-line view. Check out the other video if you really want to see these guys more robustly compared side by side. Here you have TE01 with uh, MP36 Megatron. Those two look fantastic together. Really a great sort of eye-to-eye -eye scale, which I think they should be based off the G1 tune. Here he is versus MP9 Rodimus. And then we'll throw uh, the Tune Wheeljack in there as well, just to give you a little bit of contrast to a smaller figure. Let's just do a bit of Tune accuracy comparison uh, with OP Leader here. We'll try to pull in a few Tune picks here. Obviously, there's, there's some variation across the G1 cartoon, and, and we won't go too hard on the head because we know we have two options for that. But let's focus on kind of neck down. Again, for me, I think the, the bulkier chest feels right. 
the long slender arms, long slender legs. And again, I'll do more of this in the Magic Square Compare Contrast video, but I like the proportion, kind of the shoulder versus the bicep length versus the forearm length looks right. Definitely the white on the uh, kind of hips and thighs, and also just some of the patterns through the thighs and, and down through the leg as well. So I think for me, a very, very high tune accuracy with this figure. The most tune accurate available to date. Let's jump in now a bit closer on the figure. We'll start upstairs with the head sculpt here. Again, very nice. A couple different iterations here of, of the head sculpt here, but this is the more round look. Kind of a much lighter gray with the, uh, the face and the face mask. Again, this version does come with this head as well, which I think is new in this reissue. And, you know, probably a bit more um, what we see more often through the cartoon and also uh, more consistent with the primary head used for Magic Square. So again, they came with a whole helmet to give you a bit more of this look. So between the two, you have that alternative. Otherwise, here you see, you know, the yellow accents there for the headlights, uh, the Autobot symbol. Again, our stickers that they provide. You got the chrome pipes going on, kind of blue tint in the window there. Gray stripe there at the chest, the chrome uh, midsection there. And again, now we get down to the nice white sort of crotch and legs. You know, I don't know why they didn't paint these hinges. There's gray there, there's gray on the sides. You know, again, a knit could have painted those to make them white and look all good, but they didn't. And nice glossy blue hands. You do get more visible the, the blue crotch section there. I think they do that a bit better. And then again, just nice white. I love the, the whole white leg thing. That's a big thing for me. I think that makes the tune accuracy much better. Again, these nice clean long legs. Really do look good. Nice, simple kind of molding and accents. Make it all look very, very tune accurate. Also, while we're up here, of course, you can open up the chest windows and you get this look inside. Then you can lift this off. I have to say it's a bit challenging. I feel like they should do a better job with some peg or something to kind of grab onto. So you can get that up. And of course, within there is the matrix. Try to push a bit more light in there. And then this too, quite difficult to get out. Probably won't happen behind the camera. Okay, so here we go. Definitely a figure where a butter knife or a small screwdriver is gonna come in handy for you. But that's the open chest. Here's the matrix. Looks pretty good, it's got some heft to it. Definitely feels like it's a die cast. Nice blue prism in there. It's got kinda got the gold look. Very well done. Take a close-up spin down the side of the figure here. Again, nice and clean, really. I'll complain about those uh, tailpipes maybe one more time, but otherwise, I like the long, thin arm. Again, I like the finish. And everything there is pretty good, save for the little you know, bolt slide mechanism showing there at the ankle. And again, we'll come down the back. You know, some, some molding back there. Just nice little finishes, just subtle little things so it doesn't look just so plain, but at the same time sticks to be in G1 tune. Even the back of the knee, I think, is, uh, is well done. So other than the extra head, which I showed you, he comes with, of course, his blaster. A bit more of a gunmetal gray kind of finish to this thing, but definitely a good size. Again, simple. Got some glossy finish to it. Little white button up here because you get a light up blast effect there. Again, it does click and lock down. So that's pretty cool. But again, just to give you a sense versus the, uh, the magic square, just since I've got it handy, definitely see the difference in color there. But overall, you know, generally speaking, I'd say the same length. TEO one's a bit longer. Magic square, probably a bit chunkier, particularly towards the barrel. But the light up feature, definitely unique to TEO one. We'll come back to this, but just while I'm ticking through some of the other accessories, he comes with a little trailer hitch plug kind of parts form when he goes into a truck mode so you can hitch up the trailer. And of course, when I refer to the trailer, I mean the MP10 trailer. Uh, here you got the axe, which I think looks good. It's a, you know, the right size, nice typical orange kind of shade through a translucent plastic little plug mechanism there on the end. And to get that on the hand, of course, we just we just need to kind of open up the 
the uh, arm flap here, put the thumb in. First, come back to the hands. They are a bit kind of unusual. He doesn't make a perfect fist. So the thumb, then the fingers have to go over. Now let's just put that bottom of the hand down and push this in. Pack that all in there, close that up, and you can see this little bar there that's exposed on the back of the hand. Okay, let's just get my hand in there nice and tight. And then, you know, latch, bar, it's just gonna snap on there. Then yeah, your boy can do some damage. And again, I think the proportion there it works pretty well. Just give you the far angle there as well. So I like that. Okay, let's take a minute and spin through the articulation here. I think overall you'll find it pretty good, but let's find some of the pros and minuses. The head's basically gonna spin around. It's a pretty nice tight joint as well. Looks down about like that. Looks up about like that. Pretty good, there's no cocking or anything of the head. And of course the antenna, kind of poseable as well, which is pretty typical with an Optimus Prime figure. The arms, got a nice little kind of ratchet all the way around. We'll go up all the way like that. And as well, you can release a butterfly with this little lever here in the back, which kind of unpegs a panel, which lets you move that forward and get more of a butterfly joint to put his hands together. So I think that basically gives you everything you need at the shoulder. Up at the bicep there, you can see a swivel, elbow, well beyond 90 degrees. Then the hand here is worth taking a look at. Of course, it's gonna spin around there. And then here you'll see the bottom three fingers. He's got like two knuckles, the base knuckle and the mid knuckle. Trigger finger, same thing, but separately articulated. And the fingers are nice and tight, which is good because Magic Square was not. And then the thumb has kind of got this fixed position like that. And again, base knuckle, mid knuckle is what you have. So when you go to try to make a fist, you know, you can't quite get all these things all the way exactly sometimes. Let's see how good we can get a fist, probably about like that. So a bit of a fixed position with some of the hands, particularly with just the thumb being right here. But again, no complaints, holds the gun well, and the finger joints are really firm. Now for the torso here, you can get just this. It does come to a stop. So you get pretty much that full degree of swing there, but not all the way around. And you don't get any sort of crunch or anything like that. You might recall Magic Square sort of had a hinge there. Uh, you don't have that here. Now with the legs, you can go straight out. And again, this hip panel is going to accommodate getting the leg straight out like this. Pretty much all the way out. Everything you'd need, I think. It tends to want to click back on that last click there. But everything you need, I think. In terms of going out to the side, this is kind of slick. This hip panel here, well, it's kind of already done some of it. Just this whole thing rotates off the bumper and everything. Again, the engineering on this thing is like next level. It's very, very good. But that makes it very complex and difficult to transform, like I said, but pretty impressive. So you can definitely get that leg all the way out. Now, there's no um, swivel at the, uh, at the hip up there. So Magic Square did have the swivel up there, but not at the knee. And they put it here at the knee, which is also what MP10 had as well. So you pick it back up there. So again, some trade-off between those two. Then just in terms of the bend of the knee, very, very good right there. And not too bad from the front. You get a little bit of kind of cover there, a little blue. A gap down there. Never perfect. I think I like that one maybe better than Magic Square, but uh, yeah, you kind of get a big hole here versus uh, Magic Square. Tried to detail some of that, but. And then here for the foot, you know, the toe is going to point and go up a bit like that. I have not been able to get it to go down. It looks like it should. There's a hinge, but all it ever wants to do is we go up. Um, so I haven't been able to hinge it down to point the toe, which I could with Magic Square. You can get. Tilt like that, again, because that thing there 
like a big pump that's sliding for you. So you do get good ankle tilt because of that. Yeah, so again, I think good overall. Again, some pluses and minuses, some trade-offs versus the alternatives out there, but pretty satisfied with that as a complete package of articulation. Okay, let's go ahead and get into transforming op leader. Uh, the instructions are pretty good. Uh, they note 58 steps. And that's even with some steps being really, you know, doing it both for the both arms, for example, and both legs. So it's it's even more if you like break out each step. The instructions are probably, I'd say, 90% complete. They do miss a couple things. So I'll try to go by their steps and fill in the gaps and also just point out some of the things that are a bit ambiguous in their illustrations. The overall, again, I'd give their instructions probably a, an 85% grade. So first thing you have to do is transform the head. When I saw that, I was like, what? Like, you know you're in for it when the first step is like you have to transform the guy's face. How many figures do you have to do that? Like, you know it's going to be complicated. So the top of his head kind of pulls up like this, and then you just bring it around and put it in front of his face. That's steps one and two. So for me, that kind of set the tone, you know? Step three is just give that a 180 spin. Step four is popping off this backpack, and it has a deep center peg, like right here. Again, this, for me, the first time around, this is one of those, uh, this was one of those butter knife moments, which I'm known to break out from time to time in my masterpiece transformations because it's just tough. There it goes. So you unpeg that. That was the big monster peg that was pegged right there. And just go ahead and, you know, just bring that like all the way up, basically. If you come back around front, they want you to just kind of open up the chest panels like this. And then again, if you go back around back, they want you to separate the whole sides. And these, these peg in like by pushing forward. So you kind of got to give them a little push back before you pull them up. See that peg right there? Goes into a hole right there. So, you know, it's a little bit back first and then up. And you can get them like this. Then you are back here pulling out um, this grill. So just kind of slide that down. That's step seven. And then for step eight here, you'll notice a little switch right here on this gray plastic. It's kind of tiny, but you'll notice a little slide there, a little switch. So give that a, a pull and it lets you extend the midsection like that, this little bar. Step nine then, you're just sort of flattening this out. So this piece we pulled out, go ahead and pull out these side panels so you get like, you know, the full front of the truck basically. Then just give that a nice flip down so it's nice and flat. And then what you can do is just rotate. This whole thing will rotate. Give that a spin around because we've got basically faux grills there as you can see. In step 12, if you're following along at home, you want to straighten that out. Step 13 just kind of rocks these gray pieces towards you. So you get the peg kind of facing towards you like that. And then must be 14, then just lets you pull that all down together like so. So step 15, one of the trickier um, movements in the transformation. And again, we come back to the butterfly hinge, which has the little locking tab right here. So you unlock the shoulder, which lets you just see how that opened up there. That was locked right there, opens up and lets you just spin all this. So you've just filled that panel and moved the shoulder back. Again, over here, little kind of button thing. Pushing that allows you to separate the shoulder by pulling like up on it or pushing it forward. So you get that separation like that. Then you can flip it basically. And just flip it around. That panel is going to fill on the other side there, as you can see, and allow you to get your tailpipes basically facing each other like that. So step 16 here, if you're on the side, you'll see this what was his side panel for his bot mode and it's on these slide bars so both of them are so slide that forward and again slide this here and just kind of tuck it under we'll deal with that a bit later but again you could slide it forward so you can kind of tuck it like so it's going to flop for a while until we really lock it up for step 17 then we're just rotating this arm 
to get the two screw sides facing straight back. 18 and 19, you're basically opening up the arm and again, folding up the hand nice and tight. Thumb in first, fingers over the top and feeding that in. Again, I always do bottom of the hand down. Tends to work best because then you can kind of flatten it back out and find the space you need. And then just close that back up. Again, same thing over here. Thumb in. Fingers all over the top. And I go bottom of the hand in first. Flatten it and close it. So then if we're back around to the front of the figure for um, step 20, we're just kind of bringing down this stuff. Again, just making sure this kind of gets in there. All the stuff we folded up inside. So we've done that. Actually, don't ask you to do that just yet, so we'll keep the chest open. And then on step 21, they ask you to bring the arms forward here as well. And here you'll notice, probably in the picture, this little panel's out. They never really explicitly tell you to pull it out, but little elbow panel. Make sure you pull that out as well right there. So when you bring these forward, oops, I just messed that. There we go. Bring those forward. Just fill in the side of the truck. And again, there's a little elbow panel here. Flip that down. Interesting, in step 22, after you've done all that, they sort of ask you to just like flip those back out like that. 23 through 26, they want you dealing with this section up here. So you kind of bring that up to get these pieces tabbed in. You then flip out the side pieces like this. And again, there's some double hinge there and some hinging, I should say. Just make sure you kind of get it nice and flat. And then you flip out and up these pieces as well. And then for step 26, they just want you to rotate this whole piece around like so. For step 27, you come back around to the front and you're just pulling straight out the, uh, the crotch piece. It kind of pegs in right there. So those pieces, pull it straight out. You're then flipping out as well these hip skirt pieces, which peg into the sides on those round pegs. And you're flipping these round pegs and hinges sections all the way around on this double hinge. Just flip it around and fold it up in the back. That's kind of taking you through, I believe, steps 29 and 30 right there. Step 31 then as well, we're lifting this off the back of the figure. Again, pegs into the blue there, two pegs. And we're folding uh, the white sections underneath. Keep all the silver bumper out. You want the hinge right there on the white underneath. And then with step 33, and remember I've sort of been letting this sit, but we have this slide mechanism, which is gonna just let you also rotate um, this section around. Oh, here's another imperfection in the instructions. Uh, to rotate this, this is stopping you right here. So you need to kind of uh, just pull that down on each side. Pull down the leg, removes that block for you. And then you can spin this. Because again, we need the uh, chrome bumper in the front for the truck. So for step 34, if we come around the front of the figure here, give both the knees a nice bend and then push down on these white pieces. So the kneecaps are off the thighs. That then lets you pull down on these thigh pieces. Just give them a shift down with your thumb and they rotate in and down give them a nice push all the way down then they'll fold in like that so again there we go a bit stubborn but get that rotated again bring it all the way down you're going to want that all the way down flush that'll be important and then fold it on the inside step 37 he's got like this spring-loaded hip there we go Pull it out and then you rotate it back and towards you. You'll feel that click in. Again, the other side, give it a little pull out, back and rotate it. And it's kind of straighten the leg back out here for the next step. So for step 38, we're just going to open up the leg basically. So you've got like a front panel here. 
that'll open from the outside, hinge out. On the back, you get a little panel here. That'll open up like that. And that allows you to, and also pegs up here at the tank. That allows you to just spread that wide open like this. Let's go ahead and do the other leg. So again, the outside will hinge towards the inside. The gas tank's got a peg on it. The back of the leg there, got some pegs. That'll open up. And we can open these like this. And want to flatten that hinge out there in the middle towards the foot. And then on step 39 here, you just want to hinge these feet down like so. Step 40 is a bit tricky and critical as well, but there's a mechanism here that lets you, right up here, want to lets you shift this panel all the way to the other side and double hinge and kind of a hook mechanism. So you want to hinge that over and lock it back over here. That's critical. Again, it kind of... Uh, on hook, basically kind of give it a little like that, push down and in, double hinge it over, and then hook it back right like that. So definitely a trickier step there. For 41, if we come around this way, this hinge here, you just want to fold back on itself, again double hinge, and then for 42, they where that tab emerged, they double hinge back as well on themselves like that as well. For 43, we need to reposition the gas tanks, basically just kind of get them flipped to the other side. So you just kind of bring it around like this, spin it, and put it out like that. Instructions make it more complicated than it looks. So push it forward, rotate it, and just push it back. And then on step 44 here, we're basically just gonna fold all this stuff up. So hinge there. Hold up here, you'll get a peg here and a peg at the gas tank. So we have that, again, hinge around. Peg here, kind of there, and right there. So we have that. For step 45, if you come around to this side then, we are flipping out these panels here. Make them a bit longer. They flip off the top, and then those go straight down. They give you some sort of finish for the, you know, the back of the rig. Then for step 47, you are basically just rocking it back like this, obviously making the truck. But you're like, what the heck? The wheels are on the inside. So step 48 is key for that. Um, this midsection here, so get them, get them tall again. This is gonna end up underneath. So you're just gonna to wanna to flip this leg up and it's gonna go actually right over the top of that uh, you know, belt section, whatever you wanna call it. So you flip up the leg and see how that's going underneath of all of that. Those come together like this. You get your natural pegs there in the middle, typical Optimus peg the leg together stuff. So then if we come for step uh, 49 here, we want to go ahead and push these back down. And we get some things sort of back together. This is getting hung up on this little piece in here. So again, make sure you got those bars all hinged together correctly. So those will fold back in for you. Let you bring the arms in. There you go. Also here on 49, get your antenna basically pointing down. There's some tabs there to watch out, but sort of get those straight down. Step 50, if we're at the front of the cab, just close up the window there. Like steps uh, 51 to 54 here, we're going to deal with with this back section here. So we had the antenna lined up, we can bring down the head, and you need to sort of just rock out the arms like that. Also, let me just do something before I do that actually. 
pull out the smokestack. So you get a little gap clearance. Just pull them straight out. Gives you a little gap between the arms there. Again, you've got them rocked out to the side like this. You can bring the head down. And what's going to happen here then is you can come underneath and actually clear the bottom between the gap and those uh, smokestacks there. So just bring that on, on down, these panels in front of the uh, gas tanks there. And then you can kind of you know, put that back, come back to the side here. Of course, then these are going to go forward. And you're just going to want to kind of fill this in. you got a peg here. It's going to go into the wheelbase there, like that. Let's come around the other side here. Definitely going to need a little arm clean up here. So again, that's going to go in there like that. That's going to go into the wheel section there. And the arms are protruding a bit. There we go. Let's pull out the front end. Get those nice and flush. The stacks then, on this hinge, they can bend to the outside. Again, when they're pulled out, and this one's always kind of stubborn. It wants to push in before it hinges. There we go. Step 53 here also, just for the feet, make sure the pins are out wide. They may have already found their way in that position, but otherwise get them there just by, you, know, you can just give them a slide there, of course. So now we're on the home stretch here, basically uh, step 55, we have to deal with the bumper. Again, a little bit of a trick here. So um, you can square this up, you know, like this. And then step 56 is these little uh, white back panels with the white nubs on them, the pegs. Give them a push up. You hear them shift up a bit. That's what then enables you in step 57 to actually get the clearance to push this back. And again, that will uh, just tab in there on the sides, right there. And then also on 57, you're just cleaning up the mirror. I guess that one has found it. They've already found themselves to the outside. Uh, the wipers here, of course, are going to come up as well. I do think that's cool about the bot mode that there's no wipers and you, know, you get this faux front end to really get them come out in the truck mode. So there you go. That's the... 58 step, as they call it, transformation. And now let's go ahead and bring back in our trailer accessory piece that I showed you earlier. It's gonna peg in uh, right here in the back of the legs. So here we have OP leader in truck mode. It looks really nice. I think it's the nicest looking truck that we've got so far. They go with the all red cab. So no, no stripe at all. Again, you still get the nice chrome there for the grill and the bumper and the lights and the wipers come in and take effect. The mirrors there, which flipped out, which I like. Chrome wheels. You get the black tires there. A little rubbery feel to them. And the hitch, which we'll come back to. I think the whole, whatever this is, the back end of the, of the cab cleans up the best of anything we've got so far. Again, the chrome tanks there come out looking nice. Nice boxy cab looks really good dark windows again kind of bluish tint that we know with the front a bit darker on the sides so yeah pretty happy with it um, definitely the the pipes really made the fit uh, the truck mode here best versus the bop mode but just nice simple clean uh, optimus prime cab from the cartoon Nothing too flashy, but still a lot of nice molding, the steps and everything through here. Just all kinds of different stuff riveted through there. So yellow lights up top as well. Pretty simple, uh, but very cool. And I'll just pick them up here and give you a bit of the, the overview. Top side there, as you can see. And again, some nice effects here. Kind of the blue diamond metal sort of texture in there. Looks good. Again, nice and simple there on the side. You can see the type of molding, you know, rivets and just kind of detail that you get through the cab there and the wheels, which look good. The grill. And again, just kind of riveting through there. Just want to show you the underside there. Nice and clean. See all that? It's all folded up underneath there. Really tidy. And then the backside view there. So we'll get into the comparisons here. We've got 
Magic Square on the right. And you can see what Magic Square suffered from. Well, A, they, they did the stripe, which is a choice. It's fine, you can do it. You know, they put a little black accenting on the steps, which is pretty nice. I think the wheels and rims of OP Leader are way better than Magic Square. I think the tank, size-wise, makes a bit more sense. With the stacks with Magic Square, you can go shorter like this. You could extend them and make them longer, more to get the look over here. So it was kind of nice about that. You had the option. But, of course, the main thing that our Optimus Primes today have always suffered from is just this big, chunky back end. And you can just see there just how high that sits, how clunky that looks, and compare that to this nice, low, streamlined effect. That is really what's making you know, all the difference in truck mode. And then if we brought in MP10 there as well, it was always kind of the same thing. Magic Square didn't really improve MP10 in truck mode, maybe even made it slightly worse by making it even more chunky back here. So let's try to give you the back and front views here. Again, OP Leader, MP10, Magic Square. And again, OP Leader with the nice low profile leading square into the back of the cab. Looks so much nicer. And here from the front, again, OP Leader, MP10, Magic Square over there. Really coming down to the windows. Just OP Leader getting a bigger, boxier front window. I would say in terms of finish, it falls in the middle, which I like. You kind of have the flattest, glossiest, and then he's sort of in the middle, which is a nice balance. Which is similar with the chrome. You probably have the shiniest chrome here. And it's just dolled up a bit more like a silver over there. Probably Magic Square here doing a bit something more interesting with uh, those front tail, uh, front headlights there. But yeah, overall, I definitely think, uh, again, I like the overall red cab, and I just like the overall sleekness. They fixed the rear end of the truck, so I think i got to give that to TE01 as well. Let's not forget with the truck, we had the trailer attachment, of course, so you can break out the MP10 trailer. And that slots in there nice and simple. And I will say looks uh, pretty, pretty good together. I don't know if that's maybe a bit smidge too much space in there. But I still think it does look good. If we bring in MP10, you know, the hitch is more like there. So you only have about that much room. Mm, arguably that may be too tight. So maybe something between would be the right answer. Uh, but not a big deal. I still think it does look really nice. So you have that option uh, with OP Leader, which we didn't have with Magic Square. And with that, guys, I think I've shown you everything. Transforms Element, TE01, OP Leader, third party, Masterpiece Optimus Prime. I think the best on the market as of now. And we'll wait until Takara's comes out later this year to compare the two. But of course, that is many multiples, you know, three or four times more expensive. So this guy's a nice alternative. Link in the description below if you're interested in picking him up or Magic Square. They'll both be linked below. Any shopping you do through those links supports the channel at no cost to you and is very much appreciated. Be sure to check out my Amazon page as well. Link down there. All kinds of good transformers and other cool stuff out there for you to check out. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you next time.